This week, Steve Sullivan soars with the Hawks. The NHL Players Association presents Be a Player, the Hockey Show. Brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2001. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome to Be a Player, the Hockey Show. I'm Craig Simpson. I'll be filling in for Brett Lindros this week in the Windy City, Chicago. A little later on, I'll meet up with Blackhawks sniper Steve Sullivan. And you'll have to stay tuned for what we whip up for you after a gourmet cooking class. On After the Game, we'll catch up with former Calgary Flame Jim Poplinski. But to get you started, we find a former Chicago first round pick and pride of Carboneer, Newfoundland, Daniel Cleary on Next Generation. Next Generation, brought to you by Gatorade. Is it in you? Well, you know, in Newfoundland, I mean, uh, we're so far out there east that uh, people don't think there's uh, much going on. But I mean, if you look around, uh, there's lots of guys down there with really good skills that have even matured to the NHL. You know, John Slaney's playing now with the Pittsburgh organization. You got Harold Drukin in Vancouver. I was having a real good, uh, real good year so far. I mean, so the list, the list is uh, not very long, but I mean, there's players there with great skills. When I got drafted to Buffalo, I just went in there and. Uh, to be honest with you, everything just came at me so quick and I had so much success so early that it was just crazy. So now they're expecting big things and then the, my draft year, I didn't do so well, you know, I mean, uh, the points weren't there. Chicago Blackhawks are forever select from the Belleville Bulls, Daniel Cleary. I slipped in the draft a bit, you know, we got drafted to Chicago, and, but those three years in Belleville were uh, really good years for growing up and, and realizing, you know, can't take nothing for granted and you know you're only as good as your last game. I was in Portland of the American Hockey League at the time of the call and and, and uh, Bob Murray, the GM of Chicago at the time, just said you know I traded you to Edmonton and uh, I, was, I didn't know what to think. I personally I mean I was, uh, I was in shock and my heart was beating that kind of thing. You realize yourself you know that you know, you're expendable and no matter, you know, if you're first first round draft pick, you know, you can be traded and you know you gotta you gotta work hard at your game and play well. Cleary shoots, scores! Daniel Cleary. Yeah, I mean you feel more part of the team for sure, you know the guy's really good. You feel more responsible on the ice that you know you want to contribute, you know, offensively, defensively, be could be a, just be a key part of the team. It's now time for the Be A Player trivia question. To play along, send your answer to the NHLPA's website at www.nhlpa.com slash be a player. All correct answers will be entered in a random draw with a chance to win an NHL 2001 video game courtesy of EA Sports or an autographed NHLPA jersey. For complete contest rules, check out nhlpa.com. Name the first European to win the Vesna Trophy. Later, Steve Sullivan serves up some fine cuisine. Keep the stem in the middle. Keep the stem in the middle. And okay. then once you get a, on a roll, you pick go to up a couple. A, yeah. Pick once up you feel a more few. comfortable. Right. Okay. This week on Hit Parade, it's the best of the Sabres with Lincoln Park and One Step Closer.
player gives you a chance to ask your favorite NHL player a question. For your chance to participate, visit NHLPA.com. Mike McKay from Winnipeg, Manitoba asked Simon Gagne, how often did you practice when you were trying to make it to the NHL? Here's Simon's reply. When I was in the junior, uh, pretty after practice, I went, uh, went a couple, probably an hour in the gym and uh, worked on uh, having bigger legs and uh, having a bigger body. That's uh, And uh, sometime right after practice, shoot a couple of pucks, like shoot 50 pucks, uh, just, just uh, on the empty net to, to have a better shot. Chicago is a great sports town. Whether it's the Hawks, Bulls, Bears, White Sox, or the Cubs, the fans here support their home team. Legends like Bobby Hall, Michael Jordan, Walter Payton have all performed for the Chicago faithful. This year at the United Center, it's been Blackhawks winger Steve Sullivan who's been the marquee performer. In just his second year as a Hawk, the Timmins Ontario native is having a career year and has been one of the top scorers in the NHL. Here's Steve on our Be A Player profile. Cuts it for Sullivan, he shoots, he scores! Cuts to the net, he's in, he shoots, he scores! Steve Sullivan, hard hit, he scores! So Steve, growing up in Timmins, Ontario, how much was hockey, both in your community, within your family, a part of your life? Well, I think for my family, hockey was, was pretty much everything. For myself growing up, um, you went from playing street hockey uh, playing your regular games of hockey, playing sock hockey in the house with my brother. You know, my world revolved around the game of hockey. That's how much I loved the game. How much along the way was uh, having to prove people wrong? Especially at the time you were coming through in the NHL, the players were getting bigger. How much was that a factor going down? I think maybe that's the reason why I looked at not looking too far ahead because of the size factor. I had to push myself a little harder and make sure that you know my game was at its best every night because if not, um, people would notice. It was, it was difficult, but I think that's the reason why it's, it feels so good now being able to say that I made it. Sullivan around behind a Coming to Toronto was one thing, but being involved with a trade with such a popular player like Doug Gilmore, how much more pressure did that put on you coming to Toronto? Um, my first comments there was that I wasn't there to replace Dougie Gilmore, obviously. He's a, a Hall of Famer to be, and the stats that he put up were tremendous. I had 50 NHL games played, um, you know, that you couldn't compare us at all. So I felt a little bit of pressure. I, I'm not sure if people did put that pressure on me. I, I did it myself. Well, you, you proved you could play. Your confidence must have been growing. Uh, walk us through what happened then, seven games into the 99 season. We had that good run in the playoffs the year before making it to the semifinals. And then you come into camp and, and you can tell right from camp, I'm like, geez, the lines are set. I'm not on those lines. As the season started, it was a healthy scratch. I was playing on the fourth line. And it didn't get to about that seventh game where I went to, into Ottawa and he said, you're not playing. I just bluntly said, listen, um, if there's no room for me, I think you know, a change of atmosphere would be good for me. And he agreed, which kind of scared me off the hop. Um, looking back on it now, it was, it was one of the better moves I think I've done. Coming to Chicago wasn't a, a bad place. So under the circumstances coming to Chicago, a new situation, how did it feel? Uh, to be honest, putting on the Chicago Blackhawks jersey felt wrong, felt out of place. It didn't feel right, but you know, I had the chance. Lauren Mulliken gave me every opportunity to play. Uh, played me 20 minutes a night, power play, penalty killing, which I had never done. Um, and, and I was starting to become the go-to guy at the end of the game. So my confidence just started to build and uh, you know, just started to enjoy the game again. Steve, one of the funniest things I think I've seen all year, possibly ever, was the incident in Colorado with the fan getting hit with the puck. What happened there? You know, I got hit with a high stick and was bleeding from my nose and uh, a fan just decided to heckle me as I was skating on the boards and uh, I didn't even quite see it. Patrick Waugh gets the puck, throws around the boards, bounced off the top of his head and I looked over and sure enough it was the same guy and decided to go over there and just repeat the words that he had said to me. and. Uh, I think his wife or girlfriend thought it was funnier than he did. It was great. It was funny. And he got hit in the head. Steve, you've been a great story overcoming a lot of adversity, having success now in the NHL. Uh, if you had an opportunity, what would you say to some of the young kids, whether they're in junior or minor hockey, who are going through the same thing? Well, I, I think it's, it's the love of the game that I had that has pushed me through every, every stage and every bump in the road. Um, 
It's just wanting to put the pair of skates on every day. Being able to do this for a living is such a joy. I mean, I never go to work. You know, I, I go to, I just go to play. And uh, and I think that uh, you know, if you keep that attitude and if you just really think of it as a game and not as a career, I think that uh, you'll probably have a better chance of making. Hockey is a thinking game. Decisions have to be made in split seconds. It's often tempting to shoot first and ask questions later. However, the decision to shoot or deke can make a difference in a goal or a highlight save. Now on a breakaway, reading the position of the goaltender is critical. On a breakaway, goaltenders are trying to time their speed with that of the shooter. In this case, Daniel Alfredson doesn't have a lot of speed going, and when he makes his decision to shoot, look at how far out Martin Biron is. There's nowhere for Alfredson to shoot, and Biron gets down and makes an easy save. Now here's a different situation. With Curtis Joseph being so aggressive, the fake shot makes all the difference. Joseph comes down and commits himself, so Kip Miller goes to the outside, leaves Joseph on a lurch, and can't make the save. Excellent read by the shooter, pays off in a goal. And finally, there's the art of deception. Vincent Domfus gets Patrick Wash standing high in his crease, so Domfus is going to fake to his right. But watch what happens. Right here, Patrick Waugh makes the commitment to go this way, so Domfus back the other way. Excellent move, a little juke and jive, and just like that, a wide open net. There are many famous sports eateries in Chicago. Mike Ditka, Sammy Sosa, and Michael Jordan all have restaurants bearing their names. But one of the oldest and most popular is Harry Carey's restaurant. The legendary Cubs broadcaster was known for his catchphrase, holy cow, and for singing, take me out to the ball game during the seventh inning stretch. Now Steve Sullivan may not have a restaurant yet, but we thought we'd give him a head start with a gourmet cooking lesson. Here's Steve in part two of our Be A Player profile. Okay, it's time to do a little bit of cooking, and we're lucky enough here, Steve Sullivan, Madeline Bullwinkle. We're here at Shea Madeline. Uh, Madeline, this is your kitchen, this is your show. So first off, we'll start with Steve. Steve, are you much of a cooker, or do you do much in your own home? No, I don't. Uh, I leave that all to the wife, so I'm really happy to be here so I can kind of learn a little bit and get to, get to start doing it. Well, hopefully we can come back and we can surprise his wife after he knows how to cook. So yes. you start us off. Right. Well, we're going to start with a salad, a Caesar salad, and we're going to garnish it with little crab cakes, mini crab cakes. And Steve is going to put together the ingredients that are going to bind the crab meat together. Manly, what do you want me to start with here? You want about a quarter <laughs> cup of mayo. Perfect. And then a teaspoon of mustard. All right. When it comes to the Worcestershire, about 10 shakes. 10 oh. shakes? Yeah. Let's do three shakes. <laughs> and red pepper, about a quarter teaspoon. This is a test. Can you do this? Can I do this? Beautiful. Nice. This hockey player has potential. He does. He's got good hands anyway. Okay, That's good. Okay, good, good. And then be... Craig is going to stir it together. Okay. Add the other ingredients. All right. Uh, the breadcrumbs would keeps it all together when you do the little... That and the egg. Okay. So now we're ready to cook. It smells good already. It does, eh? <laughs> I'm not one on a lot of fat, and I don't think you want to eat that before game either. No, you don't no. want anything too heavy. How long would it take to, to cook these? Maybe five minutes. That's tops. all, eh? Right. Really? Right. Right. I may have hung out to dry on a couple of these. They weren't, they weren't exactly very tight. <laughs> well, you know what? Since we're, when I get to that side, I'm going to pass you the spatula. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, Madeline, I know we've got a lot to do for this dinner, so why don't I finish these on, and you take Steve over and get the salad prepared. How's that? Great. Work? Is there a certain way you want me to, to break this up? Well, think about how you want it to feel in your mouth. How big the pieces will be will depend on how you like to eat it. All right, well, I like the stem, so we're gonna... You like the stems, yeah. good. So we're gonna do a little bit of both. A little bit of stem, a little non-stem. How's that? I will put a little pepper on. Oh, big fan of pepper. Are you? Yes, good. I enjoy oh, my good. pepper. That's really That's good. You like that? Yeah. Yeah, I think you did a, a wonderful job. It's nicely balanced. Oh, well, thank you. Well, you guys have finished up your salad. I've finished up my second round here, so why don't All right. we bring, All it right. bring this over here? Okay, so now my job is to... Just kind of fold them in so they're kind of hidden a little bit. We're going to slice up a red onion and begin to saute that. Okay. And then take some garlic cloves and slice them. How much do you need? A lot? Another three. 
We'll cut the these charred into slices and we'll lay those on top. Hmm. Steve, you can start moving those onions around sure. while Craig's slicing the garlic. When I grill something, I don't oil the pan because then it gets real sputtery. We're gonna oil the meat. I would put them down here over this burner. Over this burner here? Yeah, so put the other one up there. All right. Ooh, good. Yeah. Nice. So I think it's time now to put the chicken. Sounds good. All right, there we go. And all right, there you go. And while you're doing that, <laughs> I'm gonna throw the uh, get some sausage too. sausage onto this. Good. So we're gonna put them into the pan, we're and, gonna, then, and they're gonna cook through cook in, in there, there, and that way the juices from the meat and the chicken get into the sauce. Okay, okay. pasta's going in. I'll do all. Of it. Wow, that's okay, good, I'm, huh? That's good. Put a little good. slice. That pepper's good. Nice, you're done. Okay. There's half a pound of pasta. Okay. And like 12 ounces of both sausage and meat. So we're really mm -hmm. gonna get a good amount of protein, which I assume you want as yes. well as the carbs. Yes. Well, Steve, it smells incredible. Madeline, thank you so much. You're this very has been welcome. so good. Why don't we sit down at the table and test it a little bit? All right. All right, good stuff. Well so, done. Good. Good job. Yes. Cheers. To us, I yes. guess. Yeah. All right, nice work. Thank, thank you. you. Shame, Madeline. Next on After the Game, we talk sports and cars with Pepper. I was just an absolute rookie, and I, I, I can still remember sitting at my desk the first week going, I know nothing about this. What have I done? Be a player, the hockey show, sponsored by EA Sports NHL 2001. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Welcome back. I'm on one of the most popular streets in Chicago, North Michigan Ave. This stretch is known as the Magnificent Mile for all the great shopping that's available. This is where you'll find Bloomingdale's, Saks Fifth Avenue, Neiman Marcus, among others. Well, if you're in the market for a new car in Calgary, Jim Poplinski is the one to see. And you'll find out why on After the Game. Poplinski, right side, in front, he scores! During his 10-year career, Jim Poplinski was the epitome of hard work, dedication, and loyalty. He proudly wore the Flames' blazing logo on his chest throughout his entire NHL life. Jim contributed to the Flames by recording over 400 points, and more importantly, always standing up for his teammates. Full of passion, the former captain led his team through one of the most intense rivalries in hockey history. You talk about, about games full of passion, I mean, I'm talking about it now and I can feel the back of, the, of my neck, the hair, whatever hair is left, bristling up on it. Uh, just thinking about those games, I can't believe that somebody wasn't seriously hurt because we were so absolutely bent on winning, uh, we'd do anything. They were absolutely ferociously competitive games and uh, uh, when I look back on that, uh, it, it shocks me that somebody wasn't injured. Jim's illustrious career was topped off in 1989 when he raised Lord Stanley's mug. He retired five months later. Today, Jim runs a vehicle leasing company in Calgary. When I decided to stop playing, I wasn't sure whether anybody would, would call and offer me a job. I didn't know, I knew what I didn't like to do, um, but my big problem is I like to do most everything. So I just started looking at things. And uh, one day my father-in-law called and he said, uh, geez, I was reading the, the Globe and there's a, uh, there's a little, uh, leasing company for advertised for sale in the Globe and Mail. So I called up and, geez, we started talking about this thing and uh, uh, about four or five months later we had closed on the deal and, uh, and I was running this leasing company. Good afternoon, Jim Plinsky, Space Master. Leasing became, uh, through the 90s, became quite popular and uh, interest rates were coming down and so there was a number of things that, uh, that were not necessarily generated by us but that were, were trending in our favor and uh, so we, we grew quite a, quite a strong business in, uh, in Western Canada and, and in the last couple of years we've tied it in with our operation in the East so we like the returns, we like the, the challenge and, and we like the future. As far as how, how vehicles work, I, I can go from, from back to front on that. Uh, you want to understand how, how they're financed and how they depreciate and, uh, and the risk of, uh, associated with those uh, different pieces. Uh, I can explain all that um, and, and make you understand it and help you understand it. If I was able to go back to square one, I think I would, I would take a little bit more time and look at different 
options, uh, maybe even train myself a little differently because I can tell you when I got into when I got into business, I was just an absolute rookie, and I, I I can still remember sitting at my desk the first week going, I know nothing about this. What have I done? I think that looks better than this. However, uh, we are where we are, and I have absolutely no second guessing, no second thoughts in my mind at all, and I know that that. Uh, that at the end of the day, I'm doing stuff on a daily basis that uh, that I really like. And uh, if if you can get up every morning and uh, uh, and get to the end on that one real quick, then uh, it must mean things are going pretty good. So uh, all in all, uh, I'd do her the same way again. <laughs> Be a Player Trivia is brought to you by EA Sports NHL 2001. If it's in the game, it's in the game. Who is the first European-born goaltender to win the Vezina? Oh, I know who. Uh, no, no, the guy in the, in the, he was in Philly. The guy from Vancouver, is he European? Who? I don't know. That's why I don't know the answer. I'm the guy from Calgary. <laughs> Mid-80s, eh? Who was Clint Malshaw? Was he American? Yeah. I. I'm drawing a blank on European goalies. <laughs> First know? European goaltender to win the Vesna? Hashik. Hashik? Yeah. Who is Dominic it? Hashik? Like, is it in the 90s? Oh, jeez, 80s. Who's the... Uh... Oh, uh, Pelly Lindberg? Uh, nice. Oh, yeah! Hasek. Oh. Hasek? Hasek was the second. Pelly Lindberg. Back in the 30s, Chicago was the home to gangsters like Al Capone and John Dillinger. On the evening of July 22, 1934, Dillinger was watching a Clark Gable movie at the Biograph Theater. Well, when the notorious bank robber came out of the theater, the FBI was waiting and Dillinger was gunned down. It's even said that the back alley behind the theater is haunted by his ghost. Well, you can't believe all legendary stories. But next week on Be A Player, we'll explore the legendary Stanley Cup and I'll share with you some of my own special moments about the Stanley Cup. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next week. NHLPA.com is your source for the latest stats, scores, and NHL player information. Click on Be a Player for the latest show information or send us your questions and comments. You'll find it all at NHLPA.com. Brett Lindros is clothing supplied by The Coop, clothing for men, Toronto. Chicago is a great sports town, whether it's the Hawks, the Bulls, Bears. See the face? Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Good deception. Yeah, good. Now okay. you know how the food network works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> On the night of July 22nd, 1934, Dillinger was watching a Clark Gable. What are you doing? <laughs> that walks right in front of the thing. Too.